Good evening, agents, and welcome to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. After Show on the Stream.TV Fan Show Network. I am your host, Kevin Becker, and joining me, as always, on my right uh, are my co-hosts. Hi, James Hartman here. <clears throat> and we'll keep on going down the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla Texario. Hey, Kayla. And <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. It was hard to follow. So this, is, this is the first time we've done a three person on a couch setup, so we're. We were. We were, we're on couch. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the after show. Kids. Come on. But the reason we have this three way couch is because tonight we have a very special guest with us. Joining us, he plays Idaho uh, on this season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Wilma Calderon! <laughs> <laughs> I know where my camera's at. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being better prepared than we are. Well. So, <laughs> so we want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having uh, me. And we also want to say thank you to ShieldTV.net. They, they were so great. They went online. They shared our episode last week. Uh, it was very flattering for all of us. We were so happy that you guys liked it. So please go over. Check them out. They're really great guys. They're, all, they're really, really awesome. Check out uh, ShieldTV.net. Net. All right. Now, at this point, we want to make sure to invite you to go ahead and invite your friends to join our conversation right here on the Stream.TV's YouTube channel. Give us some questions. We like to answer them. Makes us feel important. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and we want to talk to you guys about about an amazing uh, second episode of Shield. So, let's go ahead and get started, Ooh. shall we? Now. One of the big things for this episode is we had this kind of cat and mouse game that was happening throughout the whole thing with uh, General Talbot, Agent Col or Director Coulson. I, I'm very, very sorry. Right. Director Coulson <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, and Lance Hunter. We saw Lance supposedly selling out Coulson to Talbot. We saw him then being a double agent with Coulson, and then he shot people at the. It was very. We were all like, "What's going on?" So uh, <laughs> I, I think this is a really interesting dynamic that we're building for this character. Where do you think this is? All going to go. What do you think is Coulson's end game with Lance as well? Mm -hmm. well yeah, I thought I thought it was very interesting. This kind of like little, uh, um, if you will, love triangle or uh, <laughs> shield triangle that occurred with uh, with those three guys. But um, he seems to to be a very interesting kind of take. Uh, in reverse to what Ward was last season, he betrayed them for them from the very beginning, pretty much in this case, and so now it gives him the whole rest of the season to become uh, this guy who makes up for uh, and, and amends for all his past sins throughout the rest of the uh, rest of the series as it goes. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting ride, I think, mm -hmm. for the character, and he's a Brit, so you know. He's a, he's a I don't, yes, I don't really. I he's don't a Brit, know so he's I, smart. I don't know if I trust him yet. I don't know if I trust. Um, it's Hunter, right? Lance yes. Hunter. I don't know if I trust him yet. He's really cute, though. We got that. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you for your input. No more debating for that character. He's That's it. cute. <laughs> done and done. But I was, I'm a little confused by like their like. How that's gonna work? Because I'm like, okay, he's betrayed them, and then d again, and like I'm like, so now we're gonna trust him. But I think it's to place a trap. I mean, that's uh, my feeling is that there's yeah. there's definitely he's gonna he's gonna backstab the team. You think? In some way, I don't trust mm. him just yet. I, I think. Um, especially, it was so easy for him um, to portray them in that in the mission in the episode and stuff. It was so easy to portray them, and um, I, how I, maybe it's because he has problems. I mean, like Grant <laughs> Grant had uh, oh, trust geez. issues because of his past, so maybe Lance Hunter has trust issues, so he doesn't really open up to people quite as fast as the team does. So it'll be interesting to see his character progress his entire season. I guess he is he is kind of driven by money because he said that shield isn't a life, it's it's a job. So therefore, you know, mm. get out of it while you can or But I also it. believed him when he was like, you know, wanted them to have proper burials or at least <laughs> yeah, one of the characters. He has, the a, characters <laughs> he has a code of honor, <laughs> sorry Wilmer. Maybe it's because he's what a Brit. <laughs> That's it. Maybe British invasion. New Zealand. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it all goes back that, to yeah. being a Brit. <laughs> How do you feel about his character? 
Lance Hunter. About Hunter? No, it was, uh, you know, we were partners in crime. You know, I mean, I can't tell you because then it'll spoil things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also didn't get any scripts past 202. So <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't matter what I say. Uh, but, you know, knowing the show, I mean, you know, you can't count anything out, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. What you think today, you might not think tomorrow. Yeah, and it's it, it's an interesting thing because Lance is another fun character that, like we under we you, you mentioned Ward. We understand Ward because we look back. We watch The Well from last season. We watch his interactions with Garrett, and we we understand the the pain that led him to what he ended up doing. That mm -hmm. that the kind of indoctrination that was able to take hold on him. And we get to see, obviously there's something with Lance, him taking the necklace, him hanging it on the rear view mirror. There's something personal about this for him. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where his motivation is. And just like we saw with the stinger at the end, it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. how Coulson uses it to his end. He's used it to start to parlay with Talbot yeah. So I think it'll be interesting to see how he how how that all plays out. Um, now, be, in between talking about the show, uh, we would be doing ourselves a disservice if we didn't take a moment to talk to our very very special guest. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> There's somebody very very special what? here. No, <laughs> let's not Brits here. Let's not get I started on that. <laughs> um, but since the show isn't about you, Mark, <laughs> let's go ahead and throw it to James. James, you had a question you really wanted to, to ask. I well. did actually have a question because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm certain that there are at other actors out there that are watching the show and are interested. You know, like they want to be in a Marvel show, yeah. so they, they probably want to ask. Uh, and I can be their conduit for that question, <laughs> if you will. What was it like auditioning for a Marvel show? What was it like auditioning for this for this particular show and, and, and um, being a part of it? What was the process? process. Yeah. For this one, uh, I mean, it's pretty much just like every other one. You you know, you get your audition. You you know, you've got to go in and you know, you work on your material. And you, you know, then you go home and sit by the phone and cry if you don't get it. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my <laughs> days. <laughs> exactly. uh, but this one's a little different because you know everything is so you know uh, under wraps. So yeah. I basically had to sign you know my life away, non-disclosure, saying I couldn't talk about anything before the audition. And then when I got the audition, they were dummy sides anyway. So I'm like, I. I can't really talk about anything anyways because I don't really know anything. <laughs> I just knew my character's name was Idaho, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it was basically just like any other, you know, job you try to go in on. I mean, you have to put aside that, you know, it's Marvel, it's, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's a show that people are going to watch, that a lot of people are going to watch, you know? So you can't put that added pressure on yourself. You just kind of got to take it like, it's just another job when we go in. But, you know, while I was waiting, while, you know, I was on hold for it, you know, and they told me that I was the guy, they just had to figure some things out, you know, little things start creeping in your head. You're like, well, this would be kind of cool. You know, <laughs> yeah. little, you know, Marvel's product thing. Like, I could be, you know, it's, it's a good showcase, a good, you know, avenue. So um, I kind of held my, my excitement and contentment until, you know, Found out I got it, and then it was, you know, jumping around naked, running around my apartment. <laughs> Happy as can be. <laughs> Put that energy in your apartment. <laughs> me and my cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, th that's really awesome. Uh, and since we're talking about our new characters, all right, we, we've, we've talked a little bit about Idaho, and believe me, we will talk more about Idaho. That's going to happen, guys. <laughs> we will. Yeah. We have um, to. But let's talk a little bit about Mac. Uh, we saw a lot more of Mac this episode. We saw. Uh, especially his burgeoning relationship with Fitz. I think this is a fantastic way to start dealing with the fallout of, of this bomb that got dropped on us at the end of last episode. We find out that Fitz has got this temporal damage, he's hallucinating Simmons, and everyone's walking on eggshells except for Mac, the other, you know, technologically minded character uh, that's on the team, b besides Sky, but like the, you know, the kind of nuts and bolts guy. Do you guys like this relationship that's coming? Do you think it's good for Fitz, or do you just want to be like, thanks, Mac, that was great, let's get Simmons back in here? Mm. I quite don't know how I feel about it yet. Um, at first, I was just like, who is this guy? Do I trust him? Uh, but it's really refreshing to have one character who actually treats Fitz as a normal person. I mean, like, this terrible th thing happened to him, yes, but there, no, he's not babying Fitz, and that's yeah. great. I, l I love that. 
I agree with Kayla. Too. Yeah, yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Actually, I just I just really liked how he he wasn't he didn't exactly treat him like he was normal, but he he was like, come on, just snap out of it. What? Who are you talking to? Who is it? What what is distracting you? Come on, this is the task at hand. So he's trying to help him focus his energy into something something creative and something engineering because that's who Fitz is, and it's really nice. He's. He's kind of like the the Watson to his you know all over the place all, all over the place Sherlock right now <laughs> right now uh, who knows if that's gonna be permanent but yeah um, yeah but yeah I think it created an amazing <laughs> dynamic um, and 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 it was almost like uh, like emotional seeing the transition because at first when they introduce the character you don't you're like oh he's a little abrupt and whatever but then he's just so direct and then even you know Simmons you know, his split Simmons character um, is like convincing him. So the other half of him is like, he's not treating me like an idiot or that I'm wounded. And he, you know, it was just very real. And I thought that was amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't wait to see it develop. Yeah, yeah I think it's, I think it's a, a really fun thing to look at that the first half of this episode still had that Fitz and Simmons relationship that we're used to. But then by the second half, once once Max starts to really figure out how to speak to Fitz and how to communicate with him. Oh, you invented this before. All right, let's figure this. Simmons didn't come into the picture. Not that I don't want Simmons to come back. I absolutely love <laughs> Gemma Simmons. I really do. She's a fantastic actress and her character is great. I just, I think that this is a really great way for when she does return, because I think she will. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're going to see her next episode. We saw that preview. She's coming back. There's something back going on her. with her. I'm being vague for spoiler <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Hopefully people watch the show so they know what's hey, coming. I will tell you that some people maybe don't. I don't know. Uh, wow. They just watch they us. They just watch us. us. Yeah. There's would. three people. They're my parents. Uh, I have three. Um, and uh, I have four. But um, so I think it's a, it'll be a really, really cool dynamic to see what Mac can do, what Simmons can do to help, uh, to help bring him out. Yeah. Um, now, since we're talking about teams, there is a very important team on this show, um, and Kayla has a question for Wilmer oh. about this team. What? As, <laughs> as we know, um, Jed Whedon, and help me with this last name, Marissa. Marissa Tanker Rowan. There we go. Um, yes. Are the showrunners, executive producers, they run the show. How is it like working with them? Uh, they were amazing. I mean, they're really hands-on. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, producers are on shows, you know, there are chairs there and, you know, they come in and come out, you know, because there's a lot of people, a lot of eyes. Uh, but, you know, Jeb and Marissa are there pretty much. I mean, I saw them there every single day. I mean, I worked nine days, you know, eight in the first episode and, you know, one day in the second episode. And I mean, they were there all day, every day. You know, there was maybe one day where they just kind of like split shifts. But other than that, they were, you know, there. That's their baby. And you know, yeah. so they're they, very invested. They, yeah, they're very yeah. invested, that's and they, awesome. they want to take care of their babies. So that's awesome. That's, yeah. so that's cool. really cool. <laughs> they're there from morning to night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Good to know there are people out there who care about the show. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We five, care too. <laughs> there's the five of us in this room, and plenty of people that I have that I that I've been talking to online who care about it. So it's nice. You know, it's like, yeah, we're building a family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I said that in a weird tone. But <laughs> but uh, a character came back to us this week, uh, and it's a character. Character who I think we all kind of love to hate a little bit, uh, Raina. Raina mm. came back to mm. us. Now uh, I know a lot of uh, my initial reaction was like, "Ah, this chick, she's back. Arr, she makes things difficult, um, <laughs> but she also makes things interesting, which is why yes. we like her." And my question is, we're learning more about her. We learned a little bit more about her at the end of last season. Her ties with Sky. Mm. Um, and so we definitely want to to learn more about her. She's not working with Hydra. She's not working with Shield. What do you think she's trying to get out of all this? She's got her own party going on uh, with uh, with um, uh, Kyle McLaughlin right now. That's what's that's what's going on. But um, she is she is a yeah she's a very intriguing. I can't quite put my finger on whether she's evil or not because she she tends to to pick whoever is on the winning side at that moment in time. <laughs> so last season it was Hydra. This season it was initially Hydra absorbing man and then it was Shield. So 
whoever looks like they've got a grasp on the situation, she's going to go with them because she's serving her own personal interests. And that's what also makes her a very intriguing character because she, she herself is kind of neutral, but her alliances seem to not veer towards that. I so know, I like I, that. I don't know if I agree with saying that okay. she's neutral. All I right. mean, <laughs> she's kind of picking sides, but I feel like she's kind of a diva. I mean, like, she's, <laughs> she's, she's, um, she's so with... She's, she's with one team, one like she's not trustworthy. She's with one team, one time, another team, another time, and then with another, another freaking group now. It's like make your choice. Like she has an end game, and I want to know what it is because Reyna is looking out for Reyna only, and that is it. But that's what I think is great about her. Yeah. I mean, she's like that. Like she's like she's out for herself. And that, that's what makes her go. And I love that they brought her back that now, and that now she's back as even more of like a 1940s femme fatale. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, great. I love it when she walks like every scene. Uh, right. She just she walks, walks like water. water. Like, like slow walk. Hey, what's yeah. up? Yeah. It's Diva. Like amazing. Diva. <laughs> oh my Capital God. D, baby. D. <laughs> 100% sure what just happened. <laughs> this is all my favorite like, characters from like the comics that are like, that type, like Catwoman or whatever, like they, they all like, you know, it's like they're not necessarily good, they're not necessarily bad, but they're just kind of out for themselves. And so that's what makes them intriguing to me. And I, I think, think it's important to note that, that Reyna, if you go back and watch season one, wasn't like, she wasn't a Hail Hydra. She was right. a, I work for Centipede, I work for this project, oh, Hydra's backing my project. Guess I work for Hydra. You know, it's, it, it's not that she's, you know, just switching people just to switch people. She's switching based on where the money is at, I think, so mm. where the support is yeah, at. Um, and so it's, it, it, I, I look at her less as just like, she's just flopping sides, and more as she does. She has a, an obvious agenda, mm -hmm. and she will use whoever she can to get that agenda done, which, you know, yeah. does make her extremely interesting. Yeah, just as fluid exactly. as her movements are when she walks, just as fluid. <laughs> her alliances are just as fluid and, as and that, she And much. she got a hold of that 084. I mean, what is she going to do with with the 084. I think, uh -oh. I think we all have theories on that, but just like a commercial break in a TV show, I want to build some suspense. So we're going to ask <laughs> our special guest another question. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? Oh. Well, I think we're going to have Mark ask a question, oh. and he said he was special, so this is going to be like a special. A special, special. <laughs> yeah, this is double special. Special feature. <laughs> um, okay, well, I was curious about what it was like um, as an actor to be working when all the special effects are going on. Mm. And I know like on the scene, not to ruin it for anybody, but those aren't actually like, you know, they don't always have an explosion in their face. I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. Like, they oh, have to it's react. the first I've heard of this. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Your life for me, it was real. Wow. He was like, they actually shot at me. What I was that, that truck. Yeah. Did you say an absorbing man yeah. didn't turn into metal? So, like, yeah. Wait, exactly. Was it, was it a lot of sort of projecting and like imagination or did, or how, how was it? Yeah, or was it's, it super easy? It's it all it imagination. Easy? I mean, it's, I mean, luckily the, you know, the school that I came out of, uh, was built on imagination, you know, and creating things. So when you read in the script, oh, you're driving, and you know, you look back and you're seeing Hartley get her, you know, her arm cut off. Then you look back and you see, you know, absorbing man turn into, you know, asphalt, and you know, you're about to wreck. Like you need to, as an actor, you know, create that in your mind and, and see it. So when you're, you know, doing a green screen and it's just, you know, hydraulics in the car is just bumping back and forth and they're saying, okay, look forward, you know, look back, see her arm being cut off. Now look forward and, oh, there he is, boom. You know, like you've already kind of, you know, told that story in your head. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're reliving it and it becomes active. Mm -hmm. you know? That's so. awesome. That's yeah, really, you, that's really yeah. Good. I mean, as a child, I grew up, you know, in fantasy in my room mm -hmm. at night, you know, creating stories you know, and telling movies and stuff. So um, that, uh, that came, you know, that helped out, you know, yeah. With, yeah. The, with the acting, that's helped out, you know, with the imagination, it's kept it pretty sharp, so. Exactly. That's awesome, cool. that's, really, that's cool. really cool, thank cool. you. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so I know I left you guys waiting. Let's talk about the 084. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Kayla yeah, said it out there, let's go ahead and chase it down. So we have the end of the episode, We're talk we've got Coulson's episodes, something that obviously May now knows about, something at the end of last season was very secretive, but now at least May knows about it. They're trying to harness it, taking pictures, trying to understand it. Sky's researching this writing. Uh, and then we've also got the 084's interaction 
connection with Raina and the Doctor. Mm. Um, the Doctor. That's a different <laughs> show. <laughs> isn't it? Hey, wait, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I saw a very funny comment. Someone called Sky a Time Lord. And I was like, I don't know. Let's do a mashup. Let's do it. I also saw that. That's weird. Let's put it out there to the universe and you let's make a shield on the Doctor Who <laughs> mashup. <laughs> 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 but, uh, so we've got all of this really cool stuff happening at the end. Where do you guys think this is going? Like, we've, we've now seen the Doctor. He is obviously doing something. He's Kyle MacLachlan, who, who I, for me, is at the same time ama amazingly charming and horribly terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the way he's working with Raina. She grabs the 084. It lets her live. What are, is the doctor experimenting with? It aliens? allows her. It allows her to live. live. Yeah. Honestly, it was weird when they, these guys can tell you when she touched it. I immediately yelled, "She's an alien!" Yeah. <laughs> she, she's alien. an alien. She's an alien. She's but it ended up not us. ended up not being that because he was like, "It allowed you." So like, what what do you mean? Do you think it's a life force that's in this thing? Is it oh wait for a type of light force? I would say. What do you think? I, here's what, here's my thing. This is pointing me back towards the inhuman conversation that mm. we had last week. Of you know, if he's he seems like he may be experimenting, like it looks like Strucker's doing at the end of Winter Soldier, uh, creating this new race of of people, of superhuman, of superhuman, yeah. and because he says you want to know, I want to know what's going to happen when she touches that. Is it possible that he has experimented on her to make her what she is? Mm. That he experimented on his daughter to make her what she is? Which we're all pretty sure is Sky, right? Like we've seen the internet. But their allegiance <laughs> is not with Hydra, so I think that they're a completely separate faction. It's possible than yeah. Hydra attempting to create superhumans. I think that's why Inhumans comes back into it because it, it, it's almost like the picking of, of uh, what's inside of you and what will come eventually out, kind of like mm -hmm. the Terrigen Mists. Yeah. You don't know what abilities will come out eventually if you're in human, um, until they come out, of mm -hmm. course. It's like a, like a puberty, a kind of yeah. coming of age kind of thing. <laughs> Suddenly so, you can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a just... theory, I mean, I'm sorry. No, go me ahead. too. Well, I don't know, <laughs> maybe it's the same theory. No, you, you go with but, your theory. But I, I was, my first instinct was that when he was like, oh, it allows you to live, after I got over Kayla saying that it was she was an alien, um, was that was that <laughs> that it's it's something that it depends on your motivation, like that if like some people like it doesn't want it to have you know does that make sense I don't yeah. know if I'm being clear in the yeah. way I'm no, describing that, that it makes sense. but yeah it depends on the person's like motivation with the device or whatever it is mm -hmm. you know I, and that that that's sense. what it was and it's like negative people it's just gonna try to kill you or take you out right. but then if it's like if you have like a pure goal with it or something then then it allows you to live oh yeah. my if you have theory, a clear idea you know? yeah my theory is um, is the 084 in, in infinity still? I oh. do not know what I, I do. My it. my theory is that like you're you're talking about it being somewhat like Thor's hammer. You, if you're worthy, you can wield it. Um, Kinda. My theory is similar to that. I I feel like we saw it light up. I think it it does a scan. It, it seems to be alien technology. We saw that blue body in the box. Uh, my theory is that it possibly scans those people who are touching it, and if it's almost like checking their evolutionary level. We can't go uh, into the X Men aspect of it because they don't own it. Mm. But like. <laughs> Are you advanced in you mutant? You're not allowed to say mutant. I didn't say it. You did four times. It's <laughs> not allowed in the Marvel universe. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like it may be oh, testing, good. like, oh, okay, are you advanced enough to wield this? Right. Which, if we are talking about uh, inhumans and growing, then that might like, be it. Right. It kind of ties yeah. in what you both that were talking sense. about. Now, but did you get any hints what it was? Mm. Oh my god, you can't ask him for spoilers. You can't, you can't say I, that. I'm going to keep Remember asking. Remember that part where I said the non-disclosure <laughs> agreement? Uh, my <laughs> question for you is how bad you want to sue Kevin. Exactly. Marvel, uh, uh, Marvel against <laughs> Wilmer Calderon. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to sit here like that. But you know, I, uh, we have we just got really nerdy here for a second. Uh, <laughs> oh, which, oh, don't worry, I checked out for like half an hour. Which leads me to my next question. Uh, before the show, or once you got Involved. Did you did you have a big basic basis in comic books? Were you a comic book reader as a kid, or did you start to read any specific series once you got on the show? Um, I grew up uh, playing baseball. I was a, a baseball player my whole life, um, so I traded baseball cards. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had friends that read comic books. 
uh, but I never really got into it um, as a kid. But growing up, you know, and acting, I've seen pretty much like every Marvel movie. I, I right. love them all. <laughs> uh, but when people start dropping this and that, I'm like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I just really like the movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I booked the show, I, you know, of course, I watched, you know, started watching some of the episodes uh, towards the end of the season. And you know, fell in love with it. It's, it's a great show, and I love how they're tying, you know, the you know Winter Soldier into mm -hmm. all of this, which I, I don't know too much about. I just watched, you know, Winter Soldier, you know, recently a couple of days ago. I'm, like I said, I love the movies. Um, I love all Marvel. I just didn't really know anything about it going into mm -hmm. it, but always have been, a, you know, a huge fan. So. But that's kind of the genius of what they're doing too. Yeah, is they, that anybody it's can, so accessible. Yeah, anybody yeah. can go and out and see it, it and yeah, and understand it. And you're exactly. cool with it. I mean, but yeah. when you start asking the questions and trying to, you know, get you know underneath things, that's when it separates. You know, the, the, <laughs> right. the fanboys. That's, 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 that's when it separates fan us. For us. Exactly. <laughs> From the guy that. Oh. Like, like a universality to the message yeah. of every single film, yeah, so that's exactly. why like, you can relate to it, which yeah. is awesome and, and, that it can bring in so many. And the beauty things. of it is that it's not necessarily specific. I mean, Winter Soldier is not word for word the Winter yeah. Soldier right. comic that Brubaker wrote. It mm -hmm. is its own entity. So I mean, as much as we're sitting here going the Inhumans and this and this and this, we have no idea what they're going to take and shape and twist. And that's the beauty of this universe that yeah. they've created. Mm -hmm. Keep us guessing all yeah. throughout mm -hmm. the storyline. So that's cool. <laughs> it is very. <laughs> cool the other the other thing that I think is is really cool about this is I have been having such a blast talking to you guys uh, and getting out there and having conversations on message boards and things like that and uh, one of the really 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 cool things is we wanted to give uh, a quick shout out to uh, the Colson podcast aka shield radio um, they're in our YouTube chat tonight it's really really cool so these these people are really really great we wanted to give a, a, a huge shout out to them they're awesome really fantastic stuff and it, you should definitely go check them out once you're done here here. Definitely go check them out. Go there. Go. Yes. <laughs> Thank you go. That's your homework. <laughs> go dark. Listen to them. Go there. <laughs> Uh, and so, and now, continuing our conversations, let's let's bring us uh, some questions from you guys. Throughout the week and throughout the evening, you've been asking us a bunch of really great questions, and we want to answer them because it, it, they're fan they're fascinating to us, and we love the, mm -hmm. this back and forth. Uh, our first question comes from at uh, Numobi. Uh, they asked, "Do you think that they would use Agents of Shield to introduce an Infinity Gem rather than the movies?" Yeah, Kayla, do you? Yeah, this is why I cut <laughs> you off because I knew this was coming. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. I was I had seen this question before and I freaked out because I was like, it makes so much sense. Be uh, it makes sense in my mind because there's no MCU films coming out within the next um, year and maybe they would introduce one and then it would tie in to the Age of Ultron movie coming out next year, so bam, 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 please do this so I can be right. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Marvel. Uh, they will do Dear it. Marvel. You can be right. Be great. I feel like they're already building something so big that it would, it's like a whole nother story. Like I, don't, the, I don't know if they, it would, they could both work into the... I don't know if they'd introduce it, but I feel like they may expand upon it. I, I, yeah. I've seen a lot of theories online saying that Loki's staff may be an Infinity Gem itself. Um, yeah, and true. So it is possible that we'll see more of that uh, this season with with Agents of Shield, they can. That's the beauty. They can kind of come into this. Mm. Um, our next question definitely comes. Uh, definitely comes. That was a weird word choice. <laughs> Most definitely. Absolutely. After I checked show. this. This is going to be show, bud. <laughs> it came from at Agents of Shield BR. At, uh, said to us, Simmons, a hallucination. It hurts my heart. Mm. What do you think is the future of Fitz? It hurts our heart too. Um, mm. But Big time. Um, I, think I think I don't think we're done with. I, I don't. I think we're done with Simmons, and I and we talked a little bit about Mac and Fitz. But where do you guys hope this character goes? Simmons? You mean Simmons? It says what's the future of Fitz? Uh, Fitz Simmons yeah. uh, and duo. Well, I mean, they are they were pretty much the heart of of season one. Mm -hmm. They added and gave so much spirit and and the laughter and some seriousness and and the technology and the the brains. Everything came came from from what they created and what their what their understanding was of of all the 084s and the technology and everything that came their way. 
play. So I think it would be silly to sacrifice the dynamic that Fitz and Simmons had, but at the same time, I don't think that Marvel's going to do that. I don't think they're going to do that at all. They're actually going to evolve it into a completely new relationship that's going to take the world by storm. At least everybody <laughs> who watches this show, I think, will love what's coming. I have no idea, and and Wilmer has not told us anything yet. Interesting. But he you say nothing. that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am hoping. This is my genuine hope that they will turn it into something that's incredibly interesting. I, th I think. I think they've set up some pieces that are really, really great for this season. Mm -hmm. We're going to see Fitz come into, come back into his own yeah. uh, and even, I think, become more confident with, with who and what he is. Um, but the same with all the characters. We're going to see that with Sky now that she's a field agent. I think we've got a really cool journey for Ward ahead of us. I think Coulson coming to deal with all of this stuff. They, they've put everybody in a position where the only place they can go is up and the only thing they can do is grow. Absolutely. What about Idaho? What do you think happens <laughs> I think Idaho? I think, I think he comes what, back. What, what you guys, go up with him, I have, right? we, we have to do this. We're gonna have to <laughs> quick moment of silence for Idaho. Idaho. Okay, okay, we're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, real, real quick. Uh, now, now that we've gotten the most important part of our show out of the way, <laughs> uh, we, we definitely do want to do a couple of, of shout outs to some really important stuff the, uh, that has happened to us throughout the week, some people that we've met. Um, one of them is a lot of us entered into a really important conversation over the week uh, about Grant Ward. I, we just talked about him. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to toss it over to Kayla to tell you a little bit about some people that, that we met and talked to. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I talked to these people that run, run this Tumblr site that everyone should check out, uh, standwithward.tumblr.com. They have really great insight on Grant Ward's um, psychologically where he's at and how, um, how, how we can try to relate to him. Uh, um, a lot of people automatically went to the crazy button when we first saw him in season two, episode, um, season two, episode one last week. But it, we need to better understand the character. And if you, if anybody is interested to learning more about his character and why he is the way he is, um, why his past affects how he is in this in the future, and give his character a chance and not mm -hmm. call him crazy, mm -hmm. um, check out standwithward.tumblr.com. I, I know I, for one, uh, just in seeing it, got caught up in it, totally forgot about all the yeah. stuff we learned in the well and we learned with his backstory and Garrett and just latched on. Um, but there, there's so much more there, and that's the beauty of the show. Uh, and before we wrap up, we want to give a couple more shout-outs. Uh, we want to shout-out to At Shield Radio. Uh, definitely please check out their Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast. You can find them at helicarrierpodcast.com. Helicarrierpodcast.com. Listen to them. They're fantastic. And if you are on Facebook, go like the Marvelites fan page mm. right now. And when I say right now, I mean after our show's done. After, <laughs> Before the other one. After the after show. Yeah. Um, thank you again. <laughs> a huge shout out to ShieldTV.net. A reminder, if you're in the Los Angeles, California area on November 8th and 9th, check out oh, oh, uh, the, the CIS convention. Clark Gregg will be there and you can buy your tickets right now at casconvention.com. Dot com. Mm. All right, I am. I'm pretty sure we're all gonna go run over there real quick, um, and so maybe right we now. can see you and hang out with it. Not right now. We're still in the <laughs> <laughs> And of course, uh, the big, the biggest of shout outs to our our huge and wonderful guest Wilmer Calderon for coming down to be here with us. Thank you, thank thank you, so you Wilmer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so for all our Idaho, Idaho fans out there, uh, where can we see you next? Where else can we learn of your of your fantastic? Portfolio. Um, I did a, a series, a web series that looks like it's uh, sold to Amazon called Borderline. Um, I don't have a date on that yet, but that should be coming soon, so look out for that. Um, I just wrapped the film called The Perfect Guy for Screen Gems, so that should be in the theater sometime early next year. Um, that's what I got in the works. And other than that, just, you know, plowing through. I do real quick want to give a shout out to all my peeps in Brandon, Florida. You know who you are. I love you. Uh, to my wife, Fiona, and our little nugget. Um, I just had to throw those little verbs in there. Yeah. Yeah. To, my, to my peeps in Brandon, Florida, I love you. Stay strong. We're going to keep doing this, all right? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, Wilmer. Thank this was you so super, much. super awesome. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. <laughs> they, oh, wow. <laughs> you guys are Ooh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so right now, for you guys, go ahead and subscribe now to the stream.tv here on YouTube and Do continue it. to tweet us throughout the week using our hashtag, hashtag AOSAS. -S -S. We will continue to find out more information, talk to you guys. We're going to 
declassify everything we can find. So thank you very much. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.